Welcome back to another Worthless Mutt is Good. It is, it is great to be back. I don't know if I should say great. You know, I don't like really doing this, man. I really wish dogs would just go away. But anyways, this is episode 8. And I'm titling this one, To Fund or Not to Fund. Uh, in the last episode, in episode 7, I touched briefly on um, GoFundMe pages that, you know, people were using or had dogs where they wanted people to donate up to 1000 to $10,000 just to support either a hurt dog or a dead dog. And I'm going to touch more, um, I'm going to touch base more on that as well to show you some more GoFundMe pages that are out there. But before we get into the GoFundMe stuff, you see on the page, uh, the Dog Slayer. Um, <clears throat> just recently, um, uh, an alligator had uh, attacked and killed a, attacked and killed a dog. And that reminded me of uh, this alligator who is also known as Loki in the TV series. Uh, so, let's get into it. So in this story, this happened on the 9th of July in 21. Nearly a 12-foot alligator kills woman's pet dog in violent attack. And we have it here. Woman's pet dog was reportedly violently attacked and killed by a nearly 12 foot long alligator while out for a walk. Yeah, so it says the Florida Wish and Wildlife Cons Conservation Commission dispatched a contract nuisance alligator trap in response to an incident involving a dog. So this alligator attacks a worthless smut and they take action and they try to capture and trap the alligator. The dog later passed away, yay, due to the injuries it sustained in the attack according to WOFL. And they also add in 2020, the FWC reported there were no fatal incidents of an alligator biting a human, which happened on a record number of 20 of 12 times in the year. So look at it. Let's read, let's, let's read that again. In 2020, the FWC reported there were no fatal instance of an alligator biting a human. So no deaths of an alligator biting a human, which only happened only 12 times in 2020. The likelihood of a Florida resident being seriously injured by an unprovoked alligator in Florida is roughly only one in three point one in three point one million. And again, this is this is a, a anti dog based channel. Let's if, if we have to compare that to these worthless months. We got to compare that to man's best friend, to to the smartest animal in the world, to fur babies. To sweet little babies. And again, you compare alligators to the dog. Obviously, obviously, from what we know, comparing the alligator to a dog, the dog is the most dangerous between an alligator. Because it even says in 2020 there was no fatal, no fatal instance of an alligator biting a human. But in 2020, the fur babies have killed babies, toddlers, even their own owners, bitten random people for no reason. This is man's best friend, mind you. Man's best friend, which is glorified and worshipped. But yet, they kill way more times than an alligator. Which I'm probably going to think there are way more alligators. And there are dogs. 
And don't, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm wrong. But again, this only says that dogs are once again, once again, the most dangerous. Read some of the comments. This person says her dog should have been on a leash and not near the water. We are invading them, not the other way around. They shouldn't be killed because they are doing what they are naturally doing. So again, it, it doesn't matter if you're on a leash or not or whatever it is. Because you know these dog owners. These dog owners are, you know, uh, they, they, they think awkwardly that, that nothing will hurt their dog and their dog won't hurt anything but again until it happens until the dog is hurt that's when they want to take action dog lovers dog owners are not proactive this is where it says dogs should have been leashed because again dogs are slaves that's all they are they're slaves they're incompetent they're stupid no other real animal, no other real animal in the wild just approaches an alligator. It doesn't happen. Only the dog would do something like that. And this is on water, though. This is also near water. So if you're going to attack an alligator near water, if a dog is going to attack an alligator near water, that dog better be the most strongest and the most smartest. And apparently... This dog wasn't. And this person says alligators should be relocated to a liberal majority cities. How about relocating dogs since dogs cause the most pain and suffering? And this person, alligators have become the new pit bulls. Highly disagree. I, I think, again, you have... Again, like the article says, you have more of a chance of surviving versus an alligator than you have with a pit bull, to say the least. All right, I'm going to be moving on. All right, so this is the video. A video I found. Um... Yeah, yeah, it's just a little tiny video, and, and just hear what they have to say. I cannot believe there are people out there who hate dogs. Like, do you even have a soul? I cannot believe there are people out there who hate dogs. Like, do you even have a soul? This is, again, this is dog culture for you, where a human, like her, she's willing to lay with her worthless pesticide pesticide parasited up nasty german infested dog and then she has the audacity to i guess indirectly insult others whether we have a soul or not it's 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 up to debate but that does not dismiss does not dismiss the disgusting behavior of the dog owners and of these dogs. And again, this is what dog culture. Dog culture is about isn't about facts. Dog culture is not about facts. It's about feelings. And it's about emotions. It has nothing to do with facts. Because this, what we see here, is absolutely out of place and disgusting. Next. All right. So, again, we're going to start with the to fund or not to fund um, regarding these worthless mutts. And before I actually get into the GoFundMe pages, I'm going to look at them as 100% legit. So each GoFundMe page that I see on the GoFundMe page, I'm going to view them as legit. Again, I'm aware of scammers, aware of people who actually need it, people who need it. We're going to view that all for this sake of argument in this video 
that these are all legit and honest people wanting money to help their worthless mutt. But again, there are scams out there and apparently I found one of them. So have a listen. you know your money is really going to someone in need as lisa guerrero reports there are a number of scams out there when tragedy strikes gofundme is the place to go excuse me, excuse me. go to raise money 10 million raised for victims of the marjorie stoneman douglas school shooting last year 15 million donated by generous people after a tractor trailer collided with a bus, killing 16 passengers. There are hundreds of worthy causes on the site, but sometimes GoFundMe is used by criminals to turn it into Go Fraud Me. I'm Lisa Guerrero with Inside Edition. What you're being accused of is despicable. Did you intentionally injure your dog so that you could raise money from a GoFundMe site? Reed Herjo made this claim about his 13-week-old puppy, Atlas. Myself, Atlas, and a friend were in a severe hit-and-run accident when someone ran a stop sign. Both his back legs are broke, he claimed on GoFundMe. People were so moved, they sent in $14,065. Ridiculous. Turns out there was no car accident. Police say the dog's legs were broken when her Joe kicked him. Our investigation determined that the subject had actually abused this animal and caused injuries to the animal that he was now trying to raise money for in a misleading way. You raised over $14,000 on a GoFundMe site. What did you do with the money? He pleaded guilty to animal cruelty. Then there is the case of 38-year-old Jeremiah Smith, an avid dart player who told his friends he had cancer and only months to live. It broke my heart. So yeah, so there is one regarding these dog lovers using dogs in order to make money. Because you know, in, in this dog culture society, dogs have this soft spot on people where... <clears throat> Where it can be used to manipulate and deceive people. Because people, most people, are, are easily deceived and taken by a dog. Just show a picture of a dog and you can easily manipulate them. And you should not just manipulate their mind, you can manipulate their pockets as well. Just as we see here. So in this case... This worthless mutt needs intestinal obstruction dog surgery, and they're asking for $8,000. And they already collected 2527 This person here whoa, donated $500. $500 to help this ugly worthless mutt. Like this is this these dogs look look disgusting all over. Like it's unpleasant to look at this. Never seen an animal that looks this disgusting. Even their face and their whole body just looks like a looks like a disease, basically. This person says, "My beloved Jax needs your help, not mine." So after one week of barely eating, puking, probably eating his puke, and eventually not being able to hold down water. Jax told me it was time to see the vet. He lost 10 pounds and was severely dehydrated and was not able to move around much. <laughs> vet took some x-rays and confirmed he has blockage in the intestine. Surgery is $8,000. Again, like I said, um, the, pet in the dog industry is all about business. This is all business. If you're a vet, you will make the most bank. You become easily a millionaire just by being a dog vet because there are plenty of dogs out there and dogs are known to get sick and injured. And you can make $8,000 off of a stupid dog. And apparently, this person says Jax is out of surgery and recovering. Thanks to all who donated. You guys are all, guys are the best. So we only had th he asked for eight thousand, only got two thousand, and somehow this dog is fully recovered. And 
Again, I'm gonna look at this as 100% legit. Maybe he had the money, I don't know, but let's say this is legit. That is 8,000 to save a dog. Now let's check out the other one, the next one. This person needs 4,500 to save this ugly, scary dog. And this guy goes, my hello, my name is Barry Root. I'm setting up a GoFundMe site for my dog, Apollo. He was hit by a car or motorcycle last week and the people who hit him did not come forward. Usually dogs think they, they own the place and they will walk along the road where cars are going and get hit. Or they'll walk around along uh, the train tracks and get hit by a train. This is how smart these worthless dogs are. The surgery is coming up this Monday and the veterinarian doing the surgery wants me to pay a full amount of four or five thousand dollars up front. Which one is it? Is it four thousand or five hundred? Which at this point I don't have. He's scheduled to go into surgery this coming Monday for bone being repaired in Pinsra. So yeah, so there he goes again. Another worthless smut that decides to probably walk in the way of traffic, get hit by a dog, and this person's probably blaming the driver. But now he's begging for four thousand dollars to save his worthless mutt. Looks like there's an update. It says this is what's going to be. This is what he's going to be doing for quite a while. The good news: he used his left leg yesterday while I was taking him outside. As they say, time heals all wounds. So there's another one, four thousand. Not as much as the other one, but four thousand is still a lot of money these days this one's asking for five thousand this for another car crash uh mutt and it says hi my name is katern goman and today our beloved one-year-old husky severe husky got hit by a speeding car and he is need of surgery the question is how did he get hit by a speeding car was it through a traffic red light stop sign did the dog you know, think it was it was a god and decided to just walk across the, the road. Uh, apparently, I think that's probably what happened. The dog thought it was a god, but knowing the dog's are worthless, and decided to walk around the rock across the road, seeing a car coming, but decided to go anyways, and the car hit the dog. So again, big clap for this car for doing a good job. And they only collected 725. Let's see what the next one says. So this one needs surgery and another 400. Uh, and this one is attacked by stray dogs. So again, even, even dogs, even dogs will attack other dogs. Dogs will attack anything from people to children to other dogs to even alligators. There is no limits with dogs, whether it's a pit bull or not. There is no limit with these dogs. And... So this person, this is the most yet, wants $10,000 to help save ugly, disgusting dogs from the streets. So instead of putting them down or, you know, giving these dogs to Yolen so they can make some delicious dog soup, they want $10,000 to save these nasty, worthless mutts. And again, they're always seeing... Dogs are so smart. Dogs are, you know, gods, basically. But yet they can't take care of themselves. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't see this happening for birds or for, you know, other animals. But it's always apparently dogs. The smartest animal in the world needs to be saved by the human. And I think it's because dogs can't hunt, they can't survive, and because dogs are simply incompetent of taking care of themselves, and they rely on human intervention. And then the human thinks the dog loves it, but in reality it's because the dog is a lazy piece of crap, and is only using the human just to live for a few years and just to die. Just to die.
Next we have another 2000. My one-year-old dog dead in front of my son. So the dog is dead. And this person wants $2,000. Hi, when I'm making, I'm fundraising 2000 Please help out my dog dead by getting ran over by a big truck. Walking across the street, please. E, help me. Help, we need it. Quick. So, it says the dog was... Dog dead in front of my son's face. Wait, what? Help my one-year-old dog dead in front of my son's face. And I use this blurry-ass picture. It doesn't help hide the ugliness of the dog. And this dog apparently, once again, was struck by a truck. And they want $2,000 to save a dog. I'm assuming that this one is 100% legit. All right, next one, they want $15,000. And they're ready to collect 12000 So, not much details. And they want to save this worth this month because it was burned in a fire. And I think the best way of saving this dog is to Put the dog down. And it's unbelievable. That this happened a while ago. They already collect $12,000 for a dog. They could have used that dog to help many, many children and families. Real human families. Help, you know, start a, a, a like a community garden. But they want to spend money and waste it on a dog that does absolutely nothing. Not even The dog doesn't even do things for its own self. That's how worthless dogs are. Alright, the last one we're going to see is another 2000 They already collected 2000 and they want 3000 So this is another um, mutt lover that... Wants to save ugly, disgusting dogs from the street because, once again, the dogs dogs are lazy. They're incompetent. They don't know how to hunt or survive. They don't know how to, you know, you know, survive in the wild. They, they, they can't be independent. They rely. These dogs rely on human intervention. And humans are going to look at that as the dog loves them. In, in, in fact, no. The dog doesn't love you for giving food. The dog loves food. And the dog is just using you as a, as, a, as a food dispenser just to survive again for a few years just so the dog can die a horrible, stink-ass death. Alright, now we are on Facebook. So that's it for the GoFundMe stuff. And I, I could do a lot more, but... There's a lot of other things that I would love to share today regarding these worthless mutts. And one thing is, apparently, apparently, there are now cards for dogs, or from dogs. So, again, dog culture has taken another big step towards, uh, I don't know what to call it, insanity uh, to worthlessness? By allowing cards for dogs or from dogs, and it is just stupid, and, and it's stupid. All right, so in this video, we have an annoying dog staring down at a gopher. Like, this is the most uncomfortable and awkward situation to be in. A dog is just staring at you like that. I don't even like when people stare at me in real life. So imagine this dog just staring at this thing. It, it, it just seems annoying. Like, it, it seems annoying. Does this dog not have anything else to do? Like, no other real, real animal does this stuff. And then we have another one doing the same thing. And you got to give thanks to this glass door. Because without this door, I guarantee that gopher would not be living because these dogs 
would have mauled it for absolutely no reason whatsoever. They're just staring at it. Like, this is... I find this... Annoying. Like, like, why are you doing this? What are you getting from this? You're just staring at it. Mind your business. I wish. Alright, so in this article... I'm not going to read too much into it, but... A uh, team of golden retrievers arrive in Surfside to comfort first responders. They're going to listen. There was no music. All right. Still music. Um, all right. So anyway, so again, they're using, and they're using dogs to... Um, using dogs to comfort people. They're using worth these worthless months that they have to train the stupid out of them in order to comfort people. And look at this lady. And again, these dog professionals say never to go up close like this to dogs because dogs, they don't like this. But these dog lovers, these dog lovers... Insists on invading the dog space and wanting to kiss and make out with the dog. And this is unacceptable. So again, they had created a team of dogs to comfort people. Uh, so... On the Surfside Calm the Collapse provides support to form of sloppy kisses, knowing eyes, and fur for catching fears. This is disgusting. The Lutheran Church Charities Canine Comfort Dog Ministry recently deployed nine golden retrievers from all over the country to help with the mental health again with these service crap with this with this service dog crap. Again, we do not need humans do not need service animals. I don't care who you are, what you have. Humans do not need service animals. And they really do not need service dogs. We don't. We survived thousands upon thousands of years. Have technology and, and um, resources upon resources, technology. We do not need to resort to kissing like this person up close, these nasty dogs. Like, what does this do to mental health? How, how, how does kissing and touching these ugly things Help with your mental health. I want to know. I would love to know what this does. It does absolutely nothing. If you... Again, I'm no expert. This is just my suggestion. If you have are going through mental problems, whatever problem it is, the solution is always taking action for it. We can think and plan and talk about it Get advice over and over, but if you're not taking action to help with the problem, it's not going to get better. This, touching dogs and kissing, making out with dogs, is not, is not a solution, is not helpful at all. This is only going to make things a lot worse. A lot worse. Because we already know that dog lovers are the most, are the most mentally challenged people out there. End of story. Again, just a bunch of people using these worthless mutts to help with their situation. And again, this is, again, I know I said enough said, but this is not about mental health. This is not about, um, you know, helping people in, in crisis. This is all about dog culture and dog loving. That, that's, that's, that's. All what it's about. It is all about loving dogs and dog culture. It has nothing. This has nothing to do with mental health whatsoever or helping anything. It does not. All these people here are dog lovers, mutt lovers. And and they just they just they're just they just want a reason. They want a reason, an excuse more likely, to use these worthless mutts. That's all it is. It's full of incompetent, incompetent people. 
just like their incompetent dog. All right, next up we have, I can't wait for the office potluck. People always ask me how I make the paw print sugar cookies so perfect. So again, let's say this is 100% legit. And this person actually puts its dog, a real dog's paw print into the food and serves it to real people. This only shows that dog culture is vastly disgusting. It only shows that dog owners do not care about the health and the well-being of other people. And all they care about is their dog. That is it. Their dog. Their dog can attack a hundred people and these owners would not budge a single muscle. But as soon as a bee, let's say a bee, decides to attack their dog, I guarantee these dog owners will find a flamethrower and they will burn every single beehive that there is. That is dog culture for you. All right. <clears throat> so deep into the compost group, you know, I found a interesting worthless mutt, I guess, topic that came up. And it says, will dog poop compost on its, wait, will dog poop compost on its own if with dry stuff and no moisture? Sounds weird. I'll know. I know. See, I have two worthless mutts. Roxy wants to come inside straight after her dinner without going to the toilet, but I won't let her. See, this is dog code for where you have to waste time and and be senseless of worrying about whether a dog has to crap or not like this is just dehumanizing so sometimes i get punished and when i get her up in the morning i have to care outside or she has a tendency to squat and do a poop dog culture for you so I put her on the back steps and she wants to come inside, but I won't let her till she goes to the toilet. So again, I get punished and she go does a crap smack bang in the middle of the back steps for me to walk in. But it's been disappearing, vanishing dog crap. I thought I was going crazy if they walk on it. So it's squashed, it stays, or if it's on the top step, it stays. But if it's nice, round, little, soft, vanishes. So basically, she, the, the, the dog crap is vanishing. The dog is taking a crap, and the crap is vanishing. And she thinks it's a rat, or it's disappearing, whatever it is. Now, let's view some of the comments. All right, so this person says it could be birds. It could be it w could be rats. Um, this person says because it usually contains loads of undigested undigested carbs and proteins and other nutrients. So they're saying dog crap contains carbs and protein and other nutrients, as well as other dogs have checked. Then this person says, you have a poop-eating dog. Is not surprised. The dog I had in the military was a poop-eater. That's why I laugh every time I see people lend their dog, kiss them on the face or on the mouth. Which is totally correct. Dog owners are disgusting people. Their dog will crap and they will eat their poop, any poop. What it is, eat, drink from the toilet. And these dog owners will go to their knees and make out with their dog. Mouth to mouth. Uh, this person says the problem with poop from meat eaters are the pathogens, worms, and lots of other nasty stuff. It will definitely comp. It will definitely compost, but I would be cautious using that on e things you eat. And I guarantee you, somewhere in this world on a farm that our food. Could probably be growing on top of dog crap. Because we live in a world where practically every single person is a dog lover and dogs are everywhere. 
So I would not be surprised if our food or vegetables that we are growing, fruits, our foods that we're growing, has been mixed with dog crap. And this person says, okay, this was the comment. This was the comment that made me go like, what are you saying? Person says dogs will sometimes eat their own poop. I've been told it's because of a vitamin deficiency, vitamin B, I think. So dogs, based on this person's response, dogs will eat their poop because they lack vitamin B or vitamin deficiency. Ladies and gentlemen, this is dog culture for you, where dogs apparently will eat their poop because they lack vitamins. Even though dogs are fed some of the best food ever, dog food, the best water, they get vet, vi get vet visits, and dogs still have to resort to eating their own crap. And their owner will then go onto their knees and kiss their dog mouth to mouth after they've eaten the crap. This is dog culture for you. This title is Time to Cancel the Police Dogs Experts Say. And this is from the Notorious Vice News. So it says, last month in small northern Alberta town of High Perry lowered its flag to half mass and the police department posted a touching social media tribute after an indigenous man was killed during a tragic firefight. So that post had 1,000 shares and 4,000 likes and hundreds of comments calling the incident heartbreaking and offering love and prayers. But guess what? But none of it was for the 29-year-old man shot by, shot by police. After chasing him down for outstanding warrants related to unspeak crimes, it was all for a five-year-old police service dog named Jago. So it wasn't about the guy who was shot. All the likes came because of a dog. The four-legged cops are Instagram stars. So these worthless smuts are now Instagram stars. And I'm, I'm telling you, I am telling you, my theory is, unless it already has begun, there will be an OnlyFans for dogs. There will be soon some type of OnlyFans or webcam show for dogs so people can do their business for dog while a dog is on the computer screen. This is what dog culture wants. He visits, so he, he so this dog visits schools and collect fawning comments on police department Facebook pages. Canada's federal police service even holds contests for kids to name its canine recruits. So now they're using kids. They're evading schools where kids are and they use kids to name their worthless mutt. So again, this is all about conditioning the minds of kids. Like little by little, I mean, this is not this is not a lot, but all it takes is a seed. They just planted a seed in the child to kind of worship these worthless months. Experts and civil rights activists call for an end to police dog deployment and men patterns of brutal, unnecessary attacks. We're all willfully ignoring that we pay our police department to buy and train dogs to attack people. So it says, why are we willingly ignoring that we pay our police department to buy and train dogs to attack me? The reason is because these dog lovers get excited. They get off to when a dog attacks people or to anything. I don't know what it is. I don't exactly know what it is or why it is. But I guarantee you that these dog lovers get excited down low in their mind, brain, whatever, when a dog attacks. That's it. That has to be the reason. Lopez has found police canines are grossly 
disproportionately used against people of color and for gruesome lifelong injuries and often attack people who committed minor attacks. So they're racist dogs. They're racist poverty dogs. Hundred and fifty so there have been one hundred and fifty severe bites found almost found almost none of the victims were armed and were were suspected at low level. So for 150 of the bites where they attacked victims or suspects who were unarmed and committed low level nonviolent crimes. Some were innocent bystanders. Among the cases are an Arizona man whose face was bitten off and a 51-year-old man who committed no crime but was mauled to death in Alabama when a dog tore an artery in his groin. This is his dog called it for you. Even the, the, the police that are supposed to serve and protect are used as a way for these human police officers to get off of. They get excited when they see a dog attacks. So attorney Ditwitty Lacey has presented more than a dozen victims of police dog bites. The clients are often poor, sometimes homeless. So again, dogs don't have limits of who they attack. Rich, homeless, child, old, middle-aged, white, black, it doesn't matter. Uh, so this, this person woke up to a police dog mauling her arm. She was dragged 40 feet while the police officer asked her questions. So a dog was a police dog. A man's best friend was attacking, mauling her arm, and dragged her 40 feet while the officers were asking her questions. And then they just cuffed her without, you know, attending to her wounds. They just cuffed her after the dog attacked. This person says, I couldn't sit there and watch a dog chomp on someone's arm for three minutes and not be very, very disturbed by it. Some of these officers can. So again, this is dog culture, where even the police officers who are supposed to serve and protect will use dogs to attack and harm people because they get off of it. They get excited when a dog attacks. Like anything a dog does, basically, they get excited. So again, long read. So again, it's, it's just about them talking about the, the, the negativity of these worthless months. I know this is coming from Vice News and... Vice News could be the most, um, the most, I don't know, unbiased or, or biased or I don't know, like, I, I don't want to use the L word. I just don't want to use the L word, but Vice News could be the most terrible news or, or the most terrible story outlet that there is. Because I remember that this group of Vice, they were doing a story on, you know, dog food markets. And they were using, you know, they were, they were, it wasn't like they were reporting. It wasn't, it wasn't more journalism. It was more like them wanting to, you know, it was more feelings based. It was more emotion based than anything else. So they went to a mark, a dog market and it was all emotion and they just they they wanted the viewers to feel bad and it just wasn't about showing what happens it was about persuading people to sympathize with these worthless months so again i'm not going to show it all but there are tons there are tons and tons of videos of the police dog either unprovokingly being misused, attacking people who 
who are, who are, who are just obeying, who are, doing, who are doing nothing at all. There are countless, there are countless of it. So apparently, uh... So let's see what this is. I didn't even see this one. I'm going to see what this is. So again, there are countless, but I'm going to just watch this video just so... It's about... Hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. Hi everyone, a Hopkinsville police officer has been suspended and a canine removed from the department after the dog attacked a six-year-old girl. Jeez. The little girl is recovering, but police and her family want to make sure something like this doesn't happen again. New at 10 News Channel 5's Emily Luxon joins us with more on this investigation into the incident. Emily. Well, the Hopkinsville police chief says this is something they take very seriously, which is why they acted quickly to remove the canine and discipline the officer. But the little girl's family still believes this is something that could have been prevented. Obviously. This is one of six-year-old Kalisa's favorite summer hangouts. But her last trip to the Millbrook Elementary School playground with her brother LJ ended with a trip to the hospital. It still took days for it to sink in. It's still sinking in at this moment. Last month, while the kids were playing in the evening, a Hopkinsville police officer stopped at the school to let his canine, Eddie, take a break in the adjoining field. Something that caught the attention of Eddie, and Eddie took off running. Um, the handler instantly began giving commands for the dog to return. But instead, Eddie continued running toward the <laughs> playground and police. He grabbed her from the from the back of her, her head right here and bottom of her back. He stopped biting me in my ear and my back. Jeez. My neck. Her family thinks the attack could have been avoided. It's hundreds of yards out here for him to play with the dog. But for some reason, he, he stopped and threw this ball over this way. I'm taking every corrective measure possible. <laughs> Police sure Chief Clayton Sumner again. says the department is taking Please steps to ensure a similar situation doesn't happen again. We obviously need to make sure that um, our handlers are making a better decision and scanning and viewing the area where mm. they're going to let their dog break. Police Stop. hope Kalise will continue to recover and put the scare behind her. No one wanted this to happen and, and we're all very thankful that, that she's doing better and that she wasn't injured worse. Eddie has been sent back to a kennel in Indiana. The handling officer will remain suspended for one week without pay. He has also been removed from the canine unit. The police department also offered to pay all of Kalisa's medical bills. Back to you, Roy. Emily, thank so you. So there you the have Hopkinsville it. The police department has three other canines as part of that department. So there you have it. It does not matter whether it's a police dog. <clears throat> A chihuahua, a pit bull, these dogs attack for no reason. It doesn't matter the size or where they are, playground or no playground, homeless or rich, white or black, it doesn't matter. These dogs' mission is just to attack. All it is is just to attack people and let their let people live in, in, in fear and in terror and misery. These dogs get off at that. And then these dog lovers as well and these police handlers of these dogs they do also get off to these dogs attacking they love it these dog lovers love when their dogs attack if if the laws and the society was so much more slack i guarantee you that these dog lovers would allow their dog to attack everyone and anyone and their dog would get away with it every single time and they would do it again and again and again because dog lovers they don't care and they're mentally they're mentally deranged anyone who who brings in a dog makes out with a dog who picks up dog crap who lives with a dog kisses a dog sleeps with a dog is mentally deranged You have no argument. Well, as soon as you pick up dog shit, you have no argument. Which animal out there picks up dog shit? Which other animal picks up someone else's shit? Unless it's a beetle. Are, are, are you dog owners beetles? Are you dog owners dung beetles or something? I'm pretty sure you're better than a dung beetle. Nah, nah. You dog lovers are maggots. Not even maggots. Dog lovers are just mentally deranged. 
All right. So again, I usually do very little regarding dog attacks. And again, here we have it again. Um, on the 10th of July in 2021, another baby is mauled to death by the family's dog, by the fur baby, by the sweet little dog once again. Um, I'm just going to refresh it so I can watch the video. So again, and nothing is done regarding this. A dog attacks, and then another idiot will go out and get another dog. A dog attacks, another idiot will go out and get two dogs. It is just ridiculous. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, last time. All right, anyways, skip this then. So anyways, a five-week-old baby was attacked by American Staffy. So the American Staffy mauled, what the heck? Four weeks, four weeks before a family dog killed, four weeks before a family dog killed a five-week-old baby, the American Staffy mauled a neighbor's dog. So again, usually it's never the first time. It's like never the first time a dog attacks. It's always never the first time because there are warning signs. But these dog lovers are so stupid. They're so stupid that they will keep these dangerous things even when they have a five-week-old baby. Thinking that these dogs will be a nanny, a babysitter, be a sweet fur baby. But in the end... The innocent baby boy died on Sunday. That's being attacked by the dog in the middle of the night. So, hmm. Around 2.20 a.m. And this is the worthless mud again. They use these, you know, innocent, good pictures. They should be showing that these dogs about to be injected. That's what they should be showing. They should be showing that these dogs are about to be injected. Not these pictures with flowers make the dog seem nice and sweet because dogs aren't sweet. Again, I don't even know what sweet means in, in terms of dogs. People always call their dogs sweet, but what does that mean? I don't get it. I don't know. Was this dog sweet? Mold a five-year-old, five-week-old child. That sweet? absolutely traumatic if it's really absolutely traumatic then these dogs will get all these dogs will get the stormbreaker treatment every single dog in the shelter from now on should get the stormbreaker treatment to prevent these tragics tragically tragedies and stories from happening So the baby's parents were home at the time and were treated for shock and distress. Police are preparing for her. So again, just a little blurb. Child was attacked. Child died. And they have to do an investigation. End of story. Let's talk about how we are going to get rid of these worthless mutts. How are we going to get rid of them? Because this isn't the first baby your child has been attacked. This wasn't the first time this dog has attacked some something or someone, probably. What are the actions? What are the solutions? And, you know, what are they? We need solutions. We need to stop reporting them. I'm not saying stop reporting them, but... We need more actions than just reporting them and saying, child dies, investigation has happened, end of story. Now we're off to another one where another child has been attacked by a dog. 
So this happened on the 4th of July. It was attacked by a pit bull mix. So child didn't die, but child's in critical condition. Only six month old baby attacked by a pit bull mix. Probably called a sweet little fur baby. Uh, this attack happened 10 p.m. on Sunday. So now here, here we go. Here we go. Listen, to, listen to this. Usually 10 days from the day, usually 10 days from the day of bite, the way animal is quarantined because 10 days is minimal time for rabies to develop. Like what? Why? Who gives a damn? Who gives a damn? Again, this isn't the first time a dog has attacked a child. Not the first time, and yet we're gonna, you know, give this dog a, a, a vacation, basically. Basically what they're doing, they're giving this dog a 10-day vacation. Dog's still gonna get fed, groomed, may get a, a chew toy to chew on, and then most likely this dog is to be sent back into the world so it can bite another child. That's what it looks like, what is going on here. Once again, this is nothing new. This is absolutely nothing new. And again, it's just, it's just a blurb. A blurb, child is attacked, dog is sent away. What is, what are, what are, what are the solutions to dog attacks? Like, what are the solutions? And I can only think of one. Because leashes don't work, fences don't work, uh, microchipping don't work. How you train it doesn't work. Calling them sweet doesn't work. It's, it's like a virus. It's like the virus we're going through. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get the jab in order to stop the virus. So I think these dogs need the jab as well. Not no vaccine jab. I'm talking like the stormbreaker jab. So we can finally... Get to do what we love to do, and that is live in peace without being terrorized by these dogs. And again, it's a six-month-year-old. Everyone was just five-month or five-week-year-old. Again, these dogs don't give a damn how old you are. But these dog lovers will continually, deliberately bring in children or bring in dogs so they can mesh and gel with each other. And then some other guys go, well, my dog never did that. You know, how you train it. My dog never did that. Not the dog's fault. Oh, shut the hell up. Shut up. Because you're not helping at all either. You're, you're just part of the whole problem. And I guarantee these people said the same thing before they had their child. This dog never did that. Then once it happens, then you have other people saying, my dog never did that. This is bullshit, man. It's bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Again, another baby. Why did I not do this one again? Oh, I did. Yeah. So it's from the other. Ah, sorry. It was from the other um, article that I read um, where the baby. Five week year old baby was killed. Five weeks. Five weeks. Probably didn't even have it didn't even have probably didn't even have like ten meals yet. Probably hasn't even slept, you know, ten times yet. Five week year old was killed by another dog. It, it hurts. Like it, it really, it really hurts. It, it, it really does hurt. Um, it does hurt. Like, again, even the video uh, article before we started about the alligator attacking dog. That article was longer than the articles regarding dogs attacking children. They were longer. There were there was it was longer. 
all these articles say is dog attacks, child, age of the child, child died, child injured, dog taken away. The owner will say, the dog never did that. And then end the story. We, 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 we move on. Another idiot goes out and gets a dog. The, the, what, I, what I always open up with, you know, about shine the light. Because, again, this channel is about shine the light of awareness on these worthless muscles as a dog. And as well as shine the light on the media, the dog culture, and the dog industry that, hold, that supports, promotes, and hides information regarding the dog. So again, you can be a regular Joe with a pit bull or a dog or even a police officer with a dog. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all when it comes to dogs. You can train the stupid out of a dog, but in the end, it still doesn't matter. These dogs' mission is to annoy and to attack people and kill. That's it. Because again, dogs have no purpose in life whatsoever. Their their dogs have no benefit. They have absolutely no benefit to society whatsoever. None. 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 A lot of people are gonna think they are, but again, these dog lovers only use they only use emotional and feelings as reasons. They use dog lovers will use only emotions and feelings and intangible reasons to why dogs are important. I want to see the physical though. What are the what are the physical? Like what do, what do they contribute to nature? I know well, alligators contribute. Alligators help contribute with, you know, the population of other animals such as fish or little animals because without predators like this these then those animals would overpopulate. And again, I believe in balance. I believe that there should be a balance, and these predators do help with that. They don't just attack for no reason, unlike dogs who attack for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Like why why is a dog attacking a five week year old? Like what reason is there to attack a five week year old? I, I don't I don't get it. For anyone to attack a five week old, there is there is no reason under the sun to attack. None, 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 none. No reason to attack a five-week-year-old baby. None. I can't find it. But a dog will do it anyways. Because, again, that's what dogs do. They attack anything. And the solution isn't just writing articles and telling the world, again, that dog went to a 10-day to vacation and re rehabilitated or we put down. The solution is, yeah, to be put down. But the solution is to... Get Stormbreaker and and go for the and and just to do the Stormbreaker treatment basically that that's what it's about. So again, I'm gonna leave it there. There's a lot more that I wanted to share, but you know it's because of time and I think I showed enough for. For now, I may come back later on today, maybe even tomorrow. I may show up tomorrow and show the rest, but we'll see about that. So again, excuse me. Thanks for joining uh, the Worthless Mutts. Hope you learned something. I hope, um, yeah, you learned something, or you know, at least one little thing, like one thing that you can agree with. And again, I'm. It's not. This is not. Most of it isn't coming from me. I'm just you know sharing what I find. And I gotta give a big thanks to Facebook. Even though I'm not a huge fan of Facebook as a as an overall platform, but the groups on Facebook really do help the cause in this anti dog war. So I've got to give a lot of thanks for Facebook for helping me find these articles and posts that I could use on these videos. Thanks to Reddit, to YouTube, Google. Even though I'm fully, you know. I, like, I fully don't agree overall with these platforms, but they do help. They do help with bringing awareness and where we can shine the light on these dogs. And again, I, this is not a place to... Um, this is not a place to, to love and to worship dogs. This is a place to 
to to become aware of what these dog owners, dog lovers, the media, the dog industry is doing to these dogs and to to society as a whole. And I hope I hope there's at least one person that watching where this the information on this video can help change them and again i don't want to be the one changing people i don't want to be the one being that guru being that leader i don't want that i'm all about independence i want you to be able to watch something reflect think about it a year of reflection two years reflecting but after that you know come to an understanding that dog loving dog culture is toxic there is no benefit whatsoever with dogs. Service dogs are the same thing. I'm going to say it again. There is no need for a service dog. I don't give a damn. There is no need for a service dog. Service dogs can be eliminated from the face of this earth. Because we don't need them. People just want them and they use them as an excuse. So they can carry on with their mental illness. With their obsession with these attention whores known as the dog. Again, I'm going to keep it there. Again, this is a worthless month. Thank you for watching. And remember, it is okay to hate dogs.